Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another causal inference struggle. Today I'm talking about doubly robust estimation in OLS. I'm not going to talk about propensity score matching in this video specifically, even though it will come up. So if you haven't checked out my other video on propensity score matching, it might be helpful to do now or after you watch this video. Otherwise, timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's get right into it. Generally, when we're talking about this OLS, we're talking about an outcome variable Y, a treatment variable X, and a set of controls W. If it helps you in the examples that we've been talking about in these videos so far, our Y variable has been your stress level from zero to 10, your X variable or your treatment variable has been whether or not you own a cat, and your control variables that we've talked about are stuff like hours worked, your income, whether or not you have a cat allergy, how many children you have, and your marital status. This is just helpful, so as we talk about how exactly we do doubly robust estimation, you can either keep the more generic forms of these variables in mind, or you can think about the example that we've talked about in previous videos. Here's the way doubly robust estimation is gonna work. You wanna think of it as you're trying to do all the things. You're trying to do as much as possible with the data that you have so that when you get that causal effect estimate at the end, you can interpret it as a causal estimate. You can be as confident as possible that the average treatment effect that you get is unbiased, that it's valid, and that you've put in all the work to try and get it as close to the true value as you can. So what can you do? Well, first, unsurprisingly, you can control for your controls. You can control for W that we talked about above. We also talked in that last video about propensity score matching, so everyone has a propensity score that you can impute, and you can use that propensity score in your regression. You can also reweight your observations. It's pretty easy in Stata to create a new variable based on weights. What you can do with those weights is you can sort of make it such that people who are underrepresented in your sample have more weight in the regression, and people who are overrepresented in the sample can have less weight in the regression. Just to make that a little more clear, let's say that you have old people and young people rather than just dealing with age, and so 60% of your treatment and 40% of your control group are old, and 40% of your treatment and 60% of your control are young, and maybe in the population it's 50-50. So what you can do is you can reweight these people to be less, so less impactful in the regression, so more like it's 50-50. And you can reweight these people in the regression to also be less. In doing so, you're going to reweight the old people in the control group to have more impact and the young people in the treatment group to have more impact. So again, double your best estimation. You need propensity score matching. You need the controls. You also need to go ahead and reweight those observations to be a more representative sample. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of how doubly robust estimation works. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.